Next year you'll be doing Ben for a live challenge fan. Expand and simplify the following. So when it says expand and simplify, 
you don't just expand the brackets, but if you can collect like terms and simplify more, you need to do that. Alright, that's what it's asking you to do. You want to simplify as much as possible and make it into the simplest expression you can. So this one, if you're going to expand it, the way that we do it is, remember you have to multiply it with each part of the bracket. Each term inside the brackets has to be multiplied with what's on the outside. So what's this one going to be this one? This, 3a plus 6. Oh, because it's 3 times a is 3a, 3 times 2 is 6. Now uh, this next one, we've got 4x, x minus 3, talent. What's it going to be? Uh, yep. 4x squared. So we've got 4x here, 4 times 3 is 12, this is a negative 3. And we have to start thinking about this in terms of the sign that comes before a term is the sign of that term. So you've got to multiply, so think of it as minus 3 times 4x, it's minus 12x. So don't worry about what sign comes between, think of it as individual terms and what's the sign of that term. Alright, so 4x squared minus 12x. <coughs> this one we've got two sets that we need to expand. And then when you've expanded it, then we can collect like terms and simplify. So both sets, you're going to have to go like this. Remembering to multiply both sets of brackets, or both terms in the bracket. So what's it going to be here? Even? What's the first set of brackets expanded? Um, 4B. <coughs> yep, 4 times minus Positive times are negative. Yep. Uh, four times three is three fours are the negative, we know that. Three fours are twelve. Okay, four d minus twelve. Okay, then the next one of brackets are twelve minus three d. Minus three d. Alright, now we can collect like terms and simplify. So Brad, how do we simplify this expression? Okay, so the negative 12 plus 12, that cancels out. That cancel out. And 4D minus 3D is B. So we just end up with B is our answer to this. Okay, and so you simplify this as much as possible. That's the point here. Alright. Minus 5, Y minus 6. Minus 5 brackets Y minus 6. Okay, so remember... You have to say a whole term. So you multiply minus 5 with y, and then we multiply minus 5 with minus 6. So what are we going to end up with, Josh? What are we going to end up with here? Minus 5 times y. Good. And then what's the next term? Minus 5 times minus 6. Now it's important that you can rewrite this because sometimes you don't, you don't like having a negative sign at the front. So we can rewrite this as 30 minus 5y. Either one is correct. Either or. Doesn't really matter. This one I think looks neater because you're positive at first, followed by the negative, so you only have one sign between them. But either one's fine. But okay. So remember the negative times negative is a positive. Last one. 4x, x minus 3. Somebody tell me what's the simplified version of this is. 4x, bracket, x minus 3. What's going to be the simplified expression? Alright, so we've got to expand this bracket out. So I can rewrite this as, if you're unsure about anything like this, you can actually rewrite it as minus 1 times x minus 3. 
So I'm going to expand this bracket out, which means that I have to take this negative 1, because a negative sign in front of something is just implying that it's negative 1. Okay? You don't have to write 1 there. Multiply something by 1, it stays the same. So it's minus 1 times x minus 3. So minus 1 times x minus 1 times minus 3. Remember the whole thing. So what's minus 1 times x? This 4x minus x. What's minus 1 times minus 3? Minus 1 times minus 3? 3. Positive 3. Okay, minus 1 times minus 3. Negative times a negative is a positive. Minus a positive. So then we simplify this. The expression is 3x plus 3. Alright? This is an important point. Lots of people would just write, what's the answer do you think that we get all the time? To put this in example, majority of, a lot of people would write, 3x minus 3. Okay, tons and tons of people write 3x minus 3 because they haven't done this step. Minus 1 times minus 1. There's this negative sign outside the bracket switches all the terms inside the signs around. This positive x goes to negative x, this negative 3 goes to positive. Alright, so it's a very important thing that we you make sure that you're looking at the negatives in front and making sure you expand correctly. Alright, so it's kind of 3x plus 3. Yeah. This one? Yeah, it's a negative, that's why it's 4x minus x. Any question? Okay. Alright, take out of this, please. Make the negative sign out the front of brackets. You can get rid of the brackets simply by changing the sign of each term. If the negative is turned to positive, if it's a positive, it becomes a negative. Alright? I'll just do another example here. For example, you've got, let's say you have minus 3x plus 2y minus 6. That's equal to you got a negative out the front, you simply switch around all the signs inside the bracket. That becomes minus 3x minus 2y plus 6. Alright? That's an example of how this thing works. And you're multiplying everything by negative 1. That's how you expand the bracket out. Okay. You can write that down. We'll move on to the next lot of examples. Okay, now factorize the following expression. So factorizing is the opposite. Okay, you can always check whether you factorize correctly by expanding it out. If you expand what you factorize and you get back to the original, it means you've done it correctly. Alright, so factorizing this one, what is the common factor of 3m and 9? 3. Okay, 3 has to be 3, so we take 3. So again, this is a long way. You don't have to do this one. And then what's left is m plus 3. Okay, you can go from that step to that step, that's fine. Alright, but you're taking out the 3 and thinking in each term what's left. m is left and 3 is left. Alright, what about this one? What are we going to get if we factorize this one? Alex, what would you get for this one? What's the common factor? 5 is the common factor, good. So we take 5 out the front, high sign. Yeah, x minus 6. Yeah. Good. Alright. Now this one, generally speaking, we want to keep the variable with the highest power positive. Alright, so we've got a set rule off that sometimes can be different, but so we can there's two ways to factorize this, or as many ways we can factorize it, but two main ways. What's the highest common factor of minus 2b and 4? 2. Alright, so you could do it like that. You could factorize it with a 2. So if you put your 2 out, it would be what's left here. 2 times what equals minus 2b? Negative 2. Okay, so it's minus b. And then plus 
2. And we can rewrite that as 2, 2 minus 3. Okay, that's a perfectly legitimate way to factorize. Debatable whether completely perfect, at least, that's fine. Or you can do it like this. Alright? The other factor we could take out is negative 2. Alright, if we take out negative 2, we get minus 2 times b plus 2 times negative 2. Alright, so the common factor I'm using is negative 2. So I'm using negative 2 as a common factor. If I bring it out the front, minus 2, what's left inside the bracket? That's your negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So what's left inside the bracket? So bring out negative 2 out the front. Mitchell, put on the left. What's left in the bracket? Factorizing by taking out the minus 2. Take the factor of minus 2 out of these two terms. What have I got left? What goes in the bracket? How do you get from, what do you have to multiply by minus 2 to get to minus 2b? Not minus b. 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 Minus 2. Now you see that this one, this method here, keeps the b positive. In the brackets, the b is positive. Hence, this one is preferable. This one will be seen as completely factorizing because the b is positive. This one has a negative b. It's not wrong, but this one is preferable in terms of completely factorizing. Okay? So you take it out the negative 2, and you've got to be really careful about the way to set it out. So you're just going to go back. Always think back over. If I expand it out again, what do I get back? Minus 2 times b is minus 2b. Minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4. Okay, so I get back to minus 2b plus 4, which is correct. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it to you. But if it said some people would say it has completely factorized, it means you have to have a positive variable. So, so remember they say three factorized as well as having a positive variable? Yeah, have a positive, try to have a variable as a positive. All yeah, as much as possible. Sometimes it's tough. Alright? Last one. Oh, last two, actually. We've got. 3x squared minus 12x. What's the highest common factor? 3x. Yeah, because x is a factor of both and 3 is a factor of both. So we've got 3x times x minus 3x times what? 4. And so if I bring 3x out the front, what am I left with inside the bracket? x minus and that's the way we start. Alright. So again, if I checked it, expand it out, 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x times minus 4 is minus 12x. So we get back to our original. Final one, we've got minus 2c, minus 10. Minus 2c, minus 10. Okay, now what's the highest common factor of minus 2c and minus 10? They're both negative, so I would want to pull out. Yeah, negative. Okay, so I'm going to pull out negative 2. What I end up inside the brackets is C. And what would the other part be? C plus 5. Okay? So we're factorizing it. And again, thinking backwards is very helpful. We think, okay, minus 2 times C, that is minus 2C. Minus 2 times positive 5, that's minus 10. Okay, I get back to where I start from. You can always check. That's the thing about factorizing. You get your solution, you get your answer. You can always check whether you have it right. Okay, so you're making sure that you do those checks.
Any questions? Okay. Uh, Anyway, exercise 3C, if you haven't done the first two, you just need to be going over those as well, making sure you're familiar. Ask me any questions if you have them.